wood turners. I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to the shop. In particular, ornamental wood turners. But everybody can play, right? Okay. A couple episodes ago, I showed you an eccentric chuck. And I had tons of emails about it. Well, I can't build one. What can I do? And can I do this and this? Alright. Went to the hardware store. Spent $8.43. Bought me a couple of components. Started making another eccentric chuck. I can show you how to do this. It's simple. It's eight dollars. Now I spun this on my other lathe, and it made it out around so much that I had to stop because of the weight. Then I counterbalanced it with a bolt. Okay, I can't recommend that you would do that because it could get you hurt if you're not smart enough to do it right. But it has been done. You want to see how to build this? Watch. To the hardware store we go. I have a one inch floor flange in a plumbing department. A one inch close. Now this is short. One inch short nipple. I drilled a quarter twenty hole in the side, well really at 1364 ths I tapped it for a quarter twenty. Now if you're going to do this and get serious about it, do three holes and I, you know, just because you can stabilize that piece a little bit better. Now that is the top half of the chuck. The bottom half of the chuck is this. I'll start it with a face plate that fits my spindle which is one inch eight on this lathe. I drilled a hole in it, tapped it, put a set screw. This is important because when you're running out of round, if you reverse, you could just walk it off the lathe. You won't believe how messy that'll be. You'll get a design, well, don't do it. Okay, now, I chucked this up in my other machine, and then I faced it off. You can see I've done some other stuff with it. This is what I use for, well, never mind. Um, I scribed in, from the center, a four inch circle to match this. Okay, alright now, what is this for? This is so, in this position I'm running true. I am 5 sixteenths off of true. That's where I want to try my first one. A quarter to 5 sixteenths. Then we can play with it. And I can have four holes for 5 sixteenths. And let's just say, at 5 sixteenths, I have this pencil, and that's 5 sixteenths, and I have Whoop. these four holes. Alright? So I take this and I say this line, this line, this line, and this line belong to this and it's five sixteenths. Then tomorrow I decide to go a half an inch. I turn my face plate to where I got some clear wood. I go a half an inch. Doop, 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 doop. Lines back to it and mark half inch. Aha, uh -huh. you get the drift now? Okay. So, face plate part. I'm going to put it together for 5 sixteenths. Meet you at the lathe. Don't be late. It's your turn to buy the donuts. Well, that proves to me that it will work. And also that this piece of black walnut can't be used for ornamental turning. But it will do the offsets. So I'll check up something a little more cellular strength like a piece of ebony or African black wood and go ahead and spin a couple of finials. Now, you've seen how this one is and how simple it is to make. And you can make this. Remember to caution about spinning on a regular lathe. Let's just not do it right now. I'll work on something else for you along those lines. It's a simple rig. Do you want to know how to build this one? In a moment, I'll tell you how to build this and offer you free plans. But first, a word from my sponsor. Me. Hey, what turned us? Especially ornamental, guys. A couple of weeks ago, I showed you the Black Hawk eccentric chuck. We did a couple of different projects on it. And it's a fun little thing to have, and you can build it. So, this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to break it down and show you. You ready? Watch! Let's break it down for you. This is the face of the Blackhawk 
eccentric chuck. But let's start at the meat and potatoes. I start off with a six inch disc of Corian. You need to use something extremely stable. This is a faceplate that fits my Ladezilla. It's a one inch number eight shaft. I put a set screw in it so I can lock the faceplate onto the shaft because it will move in rotation really mess up a piece. Now, once I put this faceplate on, I, to put it on I put double stick tape underneath it. I made sure it was concentric to the outer part and then I drilled and tapped these four bolts. They cannot come through the base. Then, these are the two plates that you cut out of one of the pieces of Corian. You take a sheet and you slice 145 on it. One half goes here, point up, one half goes here, point up. How do you get them in place? That's a trick. This is the slide. You cut the slide first. You cut the slide two inches wide. Two and three eighths is what this one is. Again, it's a pure 45. I sanded the Corian and polished it out here, lapping on a flat stone. So it's good and straight and at a good 45. The ring was not there yet, and I'm not taking this apart for you. What this hole was, this is dead center. So, these two pl plates were not here. I had this ring, the back one. It had a true center hole. Got that? Okay. I took a bolt, went through here, through here, through here, and that held that dovetail dead center of the entire mechanism. And then, with it wrapped in wax paper, yes, cut right wax paper, the strip is on air and wax paper, right there, all the way through. I brought these two plates up next to it with double stick tape underneath them. I clamped them and held them in place. I let them set about 15, 20 minutes, let that double stick get a good grip, and then when I was sure that my slide fit and did not wobble or play, then I took the slide out the way, you can leave it there, it doesn't matter, and then I drilled, countersunk, and tapped these four bolts. Now these can go through. In fact, they do go through, I just didn't put a nut on the back side. But I like the drill and tap part. Makes it more machining, okay? Then I had the black back plate, the two side plates, all done. I needed to have four lock screws to lock that plate in to keep it from moving when it's going round for round. So at the apex here, I drilled two top, two bottom, tapped them, put in these screws. These come from MSC Direct, and they're under $3, and they're really handy. They look like this. I some project I had, I had to sand the corners off. A lot of recycled stuff in the shop here, guys. Now, let's go back to the other part. This out the way. Not too far, but out the way. All right, plate. This is another six inch disc. It's got a hole dead center. Also, it's got a recession in it that the piece of shaft that was two inches long that you cut off of the same stock as your regular shaft is depressed in there and set in epoxy it had a hole dead center and in that countersink is a stove bolt. It goes through here, through the plate, through the shaft, and it's got a nylatron lock nut on it. That stays. Now, I should have put a fiber washer in here and I missed out. I didn't have one. So now I just put a little a wax underneath it to let it spin because I've already drilled my detents and I really don't feel like taking it apart. Now, that put the ring on here. Now, your indexing. On one end, you cut this block. See how that block is cut? And I got about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch gap. That can be more, it can be less. And one index mark. That index mark, don't worry about where it's at. I'll tell you how that works. This is drilled and tapped to go straight through and hit the center. I put this ridge in here so it, I don't know, um, and see these detents? These tents are at every 60 degrees. Again, we laid this out with a, con with a protractor. I got 60 degrees each. Now, I don't do a whole lot between, but you can. So I know when I line up that mark and that mark, 
and I bring this down right here and I fall into that detent I'm at zero and I do know that next detent's at 60 and the next at 120 right around the line I back it off and rotate it to the next one lock it down reference mark is there the reference mark could be over here the reference mark could be over here I don't care where it's at it just has a reference mark for you to work with now that's this part so you've got the plate the slide the stop the, the slide the plate the base all this goes together it weighs about three pounds it can never be spun on a traditional lathe and you have built an eccentric chuck for your ornamental lathe. Okay. I'm going to set this up and turn me a crankshaft so if I can find a piece of ebony in here or some African blackwood. Because I just love playing with that thing. I mean, the little offset, oh man, make, it makes for a beautiful piece. Really does, and I like I like playing with this thing. I can be watching Gibbs on TV tonight, slapping the nose on the back of the head and all that, and still get some work done. Okay, you can build one. Remember the caution: never, ever, ever spin on a conventional lathe. Can't do it, no matter what. Okay, as long as we agree on that. Now here's the other disclaimer: I made this. I designed it and I built it and I've never seen another one no one's ever told me there is another one there are tens of the style of uh, styles out there John McGill had one I mean I've seen some beautiful items never seen this and I don't know a lot of people that play in Korean as much as I do I love it so here's the deal for you guys make one but do me a favor the first one when you get done Either throw it away or give it to somebody you don't like and make another. Because the first one you're going to play with some design and you're going to come up with some ways to make it better. Because I don't want you to copy my work. I want you to use my work as a basis to do more work. I call it, you know, a variation in a theme. I gave you a theme. Do something else. But if you can't and you got to do mine, do it. Have it. Have fun with it. That's what this is all about. I don't want you to pay me for it. I don't want you to send me anything. I'd like to see the pictures of what you make. I really would. Send them to me at eddiecastellan.com. There's an address there. But I'm not going to charge you for this. I have no rights to it. No copyright. No patent. I never want one. Wouldn't have one. I think wood turners need to share their goodies. Their professionalism, their art, their craft. Because I'm looking over my shoulder, guys, and there's no young guys behind me. And I'm only 62 years old. I know you older guys are saying, hey, I'm the young guy. But I'm looking for the younger guys. So get out there, do it. Bring a young man in your shop, show him how you work, and have fun. Because I'm making shavings. Yeah. They live big, big ones. But God, God, i got to get me some black wood. I'm Captain Eddie Castle and be good. You know what they got some black wood at? African black wood? I need some. I, you know, I've looked everywhere. I resorted to cleaning up this week to try to find some. Whew. Man. Found a 53 Pontiac that I didn't know I had. <laughs>